Hey guys, and welcome to the video. Today, I wanna to talk about the idea of burnout in programming, and more specifically, I wanna introduce a book I've read recently, one which I think is really linked to the idea of burnout, is discussed quite a lot in the book, and I think it holds a fair bit of relevance to us as programmers. Now, I recently come across a survey on JetBrains, and it argued that three quarters of developers had experienced burnout at some time, which if you think about it, it's kind of crazy. Um, I don't know of that many jobs that you would have that high of a percentage doing it. I know, of course, there are stressful jobs, but, you know, three quarters of people experiencing burnout in a job. I think most of it might boil down to the fact that coding can be quite intrinsically hard, especially if you're kind of starting from scratch. You're quite often dealing with things you don't know how to do and have to solve, and I guess overcoming that time and time again can be quite tiring. However, one trend I've noticed, and I, of course I do a lot of work kind of scrolling Reddit on the different programming subreddits, and one post I see quite a lot is, if I code for X hours a day, will I be good? Or if I code for five hours a day, is it enough if I do this? Um, personally, I think that's a pretty horrible idea. Um, I think first of all, just giving yourself a benchmark to say, if I code for this amount of time, is it good? Well. What about the quality of coding in that time? I mean, for example, if I was just to force myself to code for say four hours a day, I'd probably get bored by like three or four and start coding really easy stuff and not trying to learn. Whereas if I know I've only got half an hour to practice something, I would probably try and cram that half an hour of really kind of interesting stuff, which I'm doing at the moment and I want to learn a bit more about. So that's likely to be much more valuable to me as a, as a learner. Uh, now the book is this. It's called Slow Productivity by Cal Newport. I managed to read it over like three days whilst I was in Spain, which was quite good. Uh, it's written really nicely. There's a link to it in the description down below. So if you wanna go buy it and check it out, then yeah, go for it. Uh, it's full of kind of nice anecdotes, nice stories, which kind of try and anchor home the three main points. So in this video, I wanna cover those three main points uh, and briefly try and explain how you can link those three points into your practice as a programmer. First of all though, I wanna kind of give you a few reasons as to why I think like, the grind is just a kind of a, a horrible idea. So before we jump into them, just a few reasons as to why I think seeing it as the grind is a, is a kind of a nasty idea and one that isn't very productive in the long run. Uh, first of all, it'll just gear you up to hate it. So if you envision yourself saying, right, from tomorrow I wanna to try and get fit, I'm gonna do like 100 push-ups a day, I'm gonna be nothing but kale and spinach. Probably by like day eight, you're gonna really hate that. Whereas if you said, maybe I'll start with this small change for one week and incrementally build on that at a natural pace, that's much more sustainable. And I'd argue that in say like five months time, you're more likely to be doing that with more progress and more productivity than you just saying, let's go crazy for like six months and then not doing it. Secondly as well, I think it's quite fatigue inducing. Uh, I don't know about you, but I find if I'm coding for kind of long periods of time, I have to kind of like just walk off for a bit and then maybe like go for a run or a walk, uh, come back and I've kind of got like a fresh head and a fresh set of eyes and then I can go and do the problem again. Um, it's kind of true in work. If you're tackling like a difficult ticket, sometimes it is nice just to try and tackle it for a bit, kind of go off, let your kind of brain reset and recharge and then come back. So these super long sessions where you don't leave the office, it's just really unhealthy. Um, and of course for your head, that's probably not doing you any good either. And the last reason why I think the grind is just a nasty idea is that it doesn't really give you an emphasis on recovery. So say if you're going to the gym all the time and you're not sleeping and not eating enough, then your work in the gym is kind of getting negatively impacted by your lack of recovery. Same sort of true for coding to some degree. Um, I know it's not exactly the same, but if you're doing tons of coding, missing out on things like sleep, then that's not really good. It's quite often in those down times away from the computer when you actually get time to let that learning sink in. So let's talk about what the book actually says and we'll round it off with a quick conclusion at the end. So it basically argues that by following these three main points, um, you can generally be more productive at a natural pace and kind of feel less stressed and less burnt out, which is good. The three points are basically do fewer things, work at a natural pace, and obsess over quality. So what I wanna do is just go through those points, discuss how those three points can relate to you developing as a programmer, and at the end, we'll wrap it up and summarize. So onto point number one, which is do fewer things. So when I was working at uni, a lot of my students would obviously be on the uni course. They'd also be taking online courses as well, just in programming, uh, just because the uni course was a general computer science course. 
So they had the uni course, they had their online courses for code. They were trying to like build projects as well and make their way through several books. So they weren't just doing one or two things. They were doing like five or six and at the same time attending other classes. So it's no wonder that many of these students ends up being burnt out and not being as productive as they probably could be. So the idea behind this is simple. It's effectively look at the things you're doing in your coding life and maybe just try and boil it down to maybe three or four, at the very most, arguably one or two different things. So if you're kind of like a, a developer on the side, you're just trying to get better at coding, I think there's much more value in maybe having one or two projects at a time. And then maybe when you're not doing those, kind of have some casual reading through a book. I think arguably if you're just sticking to one or two projects, you're much more likely to try harder at those and succeed in those rather than just kind of spreading yourself thin and trying to juggle lots and lots of different plays. So this one, of course, is pretty simple. You can relate it to anything. I mean, imagine if you're if you're going to the gym all the time and you're doing like a million different exercises, the chances are you're not gonna get really good at all of those million different things, right? Whereas if you stick to say three or four key exercises, you're much more likely to get specialized at those key different things. So to bring it back to Python for a second, suppose you wanna get good at working with APIs, rather than doing like two courses, a book, and building like five different projects, maybe build one really good fast API project, and then maybe have a book on the side where you're reading about fast API as well. Like to me, having that kind of really clear focus on these are my goals, and two, is likely to give you some satisfaction for when you actually finish those projects. If you've got loads of stuff, the chances of you finishing all of them is probably quite slim, whereas just having one or two projects that you can tackle completely finish, evaluate, learn, move on to the next one and make it harder, I think is a much better way of doing it. Two is basically related to kind of the point at the start of the video about doing like eight hours a day. And this one's work at a natural pace. So this is why I think in general, the grind has kind of got this bad reputation because it, people don't want to sit there for like eight hours a day and just type and write code and then end up writing awful code, being unhappy and then quitting really quickly. What I think is a better idea for this is giving yourself a window upon which you can code. Say for example, you might say, I wanna code between five and six on a Friday. And then that five and six can be for coding, but it doesn't have to be for coding. You haven't got to be sat there at 5.01 and finishing at six on the dot. Suppose for example, you do half an hour, you start to feel a bit tired. It's completely fine to walk off, do swing, that's a bit more chill and then maybe come back to it when you're feeling a bit better. The idea for this really is just to stop yourself associating discomfort with the task that you're supposed to be getting better at. So if I was coding for like eight hours a day and hating it, the last thing I'd wanna do the day after is come back and do it again. Whereas if you're working to the point where you kind of get a bit of enjoyment out of it, then you start to feel a bit tired, you can then leave it. The chances are the next day, I'd probably wanna come back and finish that because it was quite enjoyable last time. So really simple this one. It's simply saying, work at a natural pace, find slots in your calendar where you can code, code to the point where you start to feel just about fatigued. You know, you still want some learning to happen, but then once you start to feel like, okay, I'm not enjoying it anymore, this is too much, or I'm tired, feel free to just kind of walk off, let it go, summarize your thoughts, and then come back another time when you can carry on coding at a much more productive rate. And the third one in the book is obsess over quality. So in the book, it's kind of arguing more about quality over quantity which is good and this sort of relates back to the first point as well of doing fewer things so let's say for example you've got like you're doing two projects you're trying to read two books you're trying to write a report and get through like four or five different courses the chances of you doing like your absolute best effort in every single one of those domains is probably quite slim what will be better however is having maybe two projects and a book and giving those kind of your undivided attention and trying to write code to the best of your absolute ability in those key areas. I think if you do that, one, at the end of those projects, you've got code which you can maybe come back in a year's time and be actually proud of what you've done, rather than looking back in a year's time and thinking like, what the hell was I doing? I was clearly rushing through this. And two, I think in general, just rushing through something doesn't feel nice to begin with. I think there's a certain like stoicism to taking your time and actually giving a project your 100% as well, especially if you're like in the developer region and you're trying to maybe write projects or portfolios to show off to potential colleges or employers, giving something your best from the absolute start of your career, I think it's just a generally better way of doing things. 
you know, no like interview panel is going to look at your GitHub with a thousand projects that are all kind of half-assed and not very well written. Whereas if you've got five really good projects that showcase a range of skills, perfectly documented with amazing unit and integration tests, that's a whole lot better. I know if I was interviewing someone and they had that, I'd much prefer that candidate over the one that had 500 rubbish projects, but they've gone, oh, I've got 100,000 lines of code. Well, anyone could just scribble down 500 lines. It doesn't mean they're good, right? So obsessing over quality, I think, makes you much prouder of the work you're doing. It's generally more productive to try and write less code that is much better quality. And if you're trying to write better quality code as well, it's likely to force you to use certain techniques. So you might try and get into things like functional programming to make your code base shorter and more concise, which is always a good thing. So in general, let's just quickly recap those points. Those are do fewer things, work at a natural pace and obsess over quality. And I think I would definitely recommend reading it. Of course, the link is in the description down below. And if you've got any suggestions on, uh, on things you've done to maybe combat burnout, or if you've got some particular tips that have helped you kind of progress and be more productive in your code, I'd love to hear them, so feel free to comment down below. Cheers for watching, guys, and see you all in the next one.